All right, guys. Uh, just like in my last video, it's still the same day, actually. A second video in the same day. Although I'm uploading them on different days, yes, it's still Wednesday. <clears throat> because my last video is long, as you know, it's the one where I tell you my story. Where I started from, how I managed to get my temple, and why I decided to move to Cambodia. So you should check that out. There'll be a link at the end of this video if you want to do that. But this video is all about, uh, people have asked how much money I came here with, how much money should they come here with, and what can they do to save that money if they have a lot of bills at home. So let me touch on some of those things. I came over here with almost $10,000 because I did my research first. I didn't know how long it would take me to find a job. I knew I wanted to spend some time exploring, getting used to my surroundings, acclimating to the heat and the food and the culture. I didn't want to come here and just immediately start looking for another job. I wanted to take a little mini vacation first. But that being said, how much money you'll need is completely up to you. If your goal is to come here and find a job as quick as possible, you should be able to do that in a couple months. I would say bring at least two grand. Have at least two grand set in your bank account. Because you'll need a place to stay when you get here, probably a guest house or a hostel. Then a week or two later, you want your own apartment. That's gonna, it's not gonna cost a lot, but you will need first month's rent and a deposit. You might need some things for that apartment, basic living things. And while you're doing all that, you can hand out your packets, your resumes to get a job. And keep in mind, I've said this before, when you get your job, you're not going to be paid until one month after you start. You get paid generally once a month in cash. And uh, you will have to wait that whole month. So bring enough to cover all that. I would say at least two grand and you should be fine. I do know people though that have started out, they started traveling and are still traveling the world. And they started with just $1,000. Their goal was just to travel somewhere and if they ran, started to run out of money, they would just return home. And due to circumstances and awesome things, they've never had to come home yet, they're still traveling. And they started with just 1000 so a lot of it's going to be luck. You know, if you can find that niche and a lot of people like you and support you. But most of it is going to be planning ahead. <clears throat> knowing what you're getting into, knowing how much money you're going to need. Knowing yourself, your habits. That's going to be the most important factor. Before I came over here, I decided and I still do today, that I was just going to live as locally as possible. I wasn't going to eat a lot of Western food. I didn't need a big fancy villa apartment. Studio, basic studio apartment is just fine. So I knew what my limits were for my starting out money. Now I made money two ways. First, I had my regular full-time job, which I hated. Check out my last video, you'll hear all about, all about that. <clears throat> but I did start saving money from that. I also uh, started a GoFundMe. If anybody wanted to donate to help me achieve my goal of moving to Cambodia. And people did. So that always helped. But if you don't want to do any of that, if you don't want to ask anybody else for money, there are ways you can start saving. And when it comes to saving money, that means one thing, no matter how you look at it. To get more money, you either need a better paying job, a second job, something like that to get more income, or you need to sacrifice things that you're used to and cut back in your daily life. So if you're only getting a certain amount of income, and, you're, and you don't have a second job, you're not getting a raise, 
you'll need to find ways to maximize the money you do have. Now, I realize there are going to be people that say invest in the stock market, invest in real estate and for long-term investments, and those are all good ideas. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to tell you some things that worked for me to help me save even more money out of each paycheck. First of all, if you live by yourself, get a roommate. Maybe even two or three. Look for a shared place. A room for rent. Where you have access to the kitchen and all your other things you might need. The place I was living before I came here was $600 a month, but because I had a roommate, everything was cut in half. So I, so each of us only had to pay $300 a month for the rent. Then we split all the utilities. This helped save, obviously, a bunch of money. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, you might not like the idea of a roommate. You know, you gotta share your apartment with someone else. You don't have any privacy, that kind of thing. But like I said, if you're not making any more money, you have to, you'll have to sacrifice some of your creature comforts <clears throat> if you want to save money for a big move like you know being an expat in another country <clears throat> that worked out for me tremendously we're still really good friends to this day my former roommate so I know you hear horror stories about people who had roommates and then everything went wrong and that that does happen i guess but we had no problems we were very much alike in a lot of respects we respected each other's privacy and we each had our own little quirky habits and things but we were both very tolerant of each other's quirks i guess you can say so that really helped a lot don't go out to eat as much. I know it's very easy to stop at Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, wherever. Because you're hungry, you just want something quick. Again, you might have to sacrifice some things. Go to the, take the time, go to the grocery store. Find foods that are on sale. And eat those for the week. Yes, you, have, you might have to learn some basic cooking skills. <laughs> but it's really not that hard. Just go to YouTube. You know you're going to be on YouTube anyway. Go to some recipe sites. Say, hey, I got I got two pork chops I bought on sale for a, for you know two bucks, and here's all the stuff I got with it. And there are websites that will make you up a recipe just based on the ingredients you have. I forget the name of them, but look them up. You'll save a lot of money by buying your groceries for a week than you would if you just either A, bought them every day or went out to eat every time you're hungry. You're going to save a lot of money. Like I said, the grocery store I went to before I left, they would always have things on sale every week. They would have sale on different kind of food items. So I'd always, I would always check to see what those were. Like if I could get a if I, had, if I had a craving for a steak, you know, I didn't look at the fillets. <laughs> I didn't look at the, the T-bones. I went for the lesser cuts of meat. And if you cook them right, they taste just as good, just as tender, very, very delicious. But I could get two big, thick steaks for about $3.50, or I could get one filet mignon, which is only about half the size of those two, for about 18, 19 bucks. So you see what I'm saying? You find the things that are on sale and do that. When pizza rolls went on sale, pizza rolls normally $1.50 for 15, you know, the single serving box. When I would find occasionally, the store I went to would have uh, dollar days, They would put a whole bunch of things on sale for a dollar each, and if you bought 10 of those dollar items, you could get an 11th item for free. I love those days because always they had pizza rolls, and I would just 
have half a cart full. <laughs> two minutes, two, two and a half minutes in the microwave and boom, there's a meal. I would buy in bulk. I like the salads, macaroni salad, uh, potato salad. I even like coleslaw. But instead of buying the little containers for $2, I would spend $5 and get like a two quart uh, big thing because that would last me a while and it wound up being cheaper per serving than buying the individual sizes. But you can save money there. If you're going to move here, you're going to sell some things. Start selling those things now. Don't become so attached to your things that uh, you hang on to them till the last minute. That's one mistake I made. I waited way too long to start selling my things. And as I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of things I hadn't sold when I came here that I had to go through a third party back home to facilitate the sale between me and anybody who wanted to buy it after I arrived. Luckily, my buddy did that for me. So he would send me a message saying, hey, I have a person who wants to buy your entertainment center offering to give 25. Do you take it? I would say yes, then he would do all that, show up, let them pack it up and send me the money. But it was just a little bit more difficult to do. So it's really, especially if you have even a basic time frame, start selling some of the things you absolutely don't need. And if you think you don't have anything, I would dare say you might be wrong. Because as I was looking at all the things that I was getting rid of or selling, I noticed things I hadn't used in months, maybe even years. They were just in, in, in the closets. Things that I enjoyed having, but really served no purpose. But like I said, we get an emotional attachment sometimes to our things. And there's always that little doubt in your mind. You sell it and think, oh, now, what, now if I don't, if something happens and I can't go, if I can't move, I just sold, I just sold one of my most prized possessions. Now I'll have to buy it again, right? But, but don't let that intimidate you. Start getting rid of things now. Take that money and save it. Don't spend it on anything. Put it away. Don't be afraid to say no to lowball offers just because you think, oh, I've only got one offer on this thing. Cost me 100, I'm selling it for 50, he wants to give me 10. Don't just take the 10. And don't be afraid to do some kind of fundraising because if your family and friends support you, they'll, they'll want to help you out. Just start a PayPal account. It's really easy, it's free to sign up. Connect your bank account with your PayPal account. Whenever somebody sends you a donation, you can have it transferred right into your bank account. So don't be afraid to just put that out there. Hey, I'm moving. If anybody wants to help, here's my link. You'd be surprised at how often people will come through for you. Don't buy anything you don't really need. I know that was another big problem with me back in the States was a lot of impulse purchases. Things I wanted. And there's nothing wrong with wanting things if you have the money buying those things. But if you're trying to save money <coughs> for a big life decision yeah try to find a way which I, I still use this tactic even over here where everything's where most things are considerably cheaper I'll look at something and go oh this is such a good price I should buy it but I will find a way to talk myself out of it I'll ask myself do you really need it what are you going to use it for yeah you're only going to pay five bucks for it but is this something you're going to use every day is this something you want right now and you're going to forget about? And most of the time the answer is yes. I don't really need it for anything. It just looks cool or just something that will be fun for a little while. So try that tactic. Try talking yourself out of purchasing things that you just want. 
and I know every every time you see a list about hey save money for retirement or how to have more money in your bank account it always says things like uh, quit drinking at Starbucks things like that and I know it's kind of cliche but it's very true come on you don't need to be spending five dollars for a cup of coffee especially if it's more than one a day buy your own coffee at the store get a big canister get yourself a twenty dollar coffee maker just drink coffee. You don't need all the fancy stuff. With it. But mainly I think uh, it's about thinking why you want to do this in the first place. You say, I, I don't like my life. Something is not right. I want to travel. I want to retire someplace warm. I want to retire someplace cheap. I want to want to be able to enjoy what's left in my life or hey I just need a change in my life I want to go somewhere for a year or two years maybe teach English contribute something to society something good you have to remember those reasons when you're making financial decisions that makes saving a whole lot easier because if you sit down and can't think of a good reason why you should be saving that money then perhaps your reason for coming over isn't what it should be and you should reconsider even moving at all there should be that one reason that will snap you back into reality when you're about to make a bad financial decision that says oh no I want this worse than I need this thing and a combination of all those things And you'll be surprised at how much money you're able to save in a very short period of time. Uh, there are even apps out there like Acorn and other apps that when you make a credit card purchase, it'll take the change. Like if you buy something for $12.75, it'll, it'll uh, up, up the amount to 13 even. It'll take that extra quarter, put it in an online savings account for you. So if you use credit cards or debit cards a lot, that's a great way to save and you don't really notice so much that it's gone, right? Ah, it costs $9.95. You're going to get charged 10 bucks. You're not going to complain about missing a nickel, even though that nickel is now going into an account that will be saved for you. So you'll have that extra money whenever you need it go ahead and look those things up in online and when it comes to your debt you have back home that's something that's up to you but pay it off as soon as you can or as much of it as you can before moving over here like I said you're going to need so much money to live and it makes things a lot better if you don't have a lot of credit card debt student loan debt or any other kind of debt back where you come from. It's a big burden off your shoulders, off your mind, and lets you focus on what you want to do here. So those are my tips for helping you save money. Like I said, outside of making more money and just saving all of that, and if you do get a bonus at work, do that. I know when I was at jobs that gave you like a quarterly bonus, people would go out and buy new TVs, sometimes down payment on a car. You know, instead of that, put it in your account. Save it. Set it aside. That could be an extra, you know, anywhere from two to four hundred bucks four times a year. That's a good chunk of change over here. Anyway, those are my tips. Those are some of the things I did. So I can save the money I had to move here. And I hope that helps. All right, be sure to check out all my links down below. If you want to buy my book, Live in Cambodia, A Guide for Living in the Kingdom of Wonder, that link is down below. That'll help you out. Give you all the information you need to make your transition go smoothly. And you'll be able to find out all the ins and outs of what you need when you move over here. 
And also any donations I truly appreciate. As I said before, December is a bad month for donations. Uh, kind of sucking wind here. <laughs> I can really use a little support. So if you feel so if you want to donate, feel free. That link is down below. All other kinds of channels are down below. You can get different perspectives of people living or vlogging from Cambodia. Really good, useful channels down there. And uh, all my social media is down below if you want to hook up there. All right. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.